Hi, I'm Chico Menegat, and I play Pedro in Tinta Bruta. Hi, I'm Felipe Matzenbacher, and uh, I am the screenwriter and director of Tinta Bruta. And I'm Marcio Riolon, the other screenwriter and director of the film. O senhor continua convivendo com a vítima? Eu abandonei a faculdade. Abandonou? Fui expulso. O senhor tem carteira assinada? Faço uns bicos. Bicos no quê? No que aparecer. E atualmente o senhor reside com quem? O senhor mora com seus pais? Com a minha irmã só. Minha mãe morreu quando era pequeno. E meu pai não sei onde está. A sua irmã veio com o senhor hoje? Sim, ali. E com ela o senhor se dá bem? Muito. Senhor Pedro, tem algum momento em que parece que o senhor vai perder o controle? Que tem dificuldade de lidar com pessoas, com alguma situação? Não. Os seus ex-colegas lhe descreveram como uma pessoa tímida e antissocial, incapaz de fazer amizades. O senhor concorda com isso? A opinião deles. Hi, welcome to the 32nd Teddy Award. I'm João Borbobac and I'm here to have a conversation with the directors and leading actor of Tinta Bruta, which premieres at the panorama section of this year's Berlinale. So, hello guys. Hello. Welcome. Um, this is not the first time that you are here at the Berlinale in the panorama. You're, like, the two of you, you work together often. Um, and your last film, Seashore, premiered uh, at the Berlinale as well, in the panorama. Yes. Uh, at the forum section. Oh, at the forum. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so, so, so at the forum. Um, how is it to be back? Yeah. Oh, it's great, actually. Yes. We're very happy with it. So uh, we've been working on this film for quite some time, and uh, okay. yes. we're really excited about finally showing it yeah. to the world, you know? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this new movie that premieres yeah. Natin Tabruta, it follows um, a young guy who is on quite a tough road of let's say self-discovery and also just discovering um, new aspects uh, of his life. Um, so can you tell me a bit more about how did you get into this storyline and, and particularly to this character? I think the very starting point for us was a short film that Felipe directed in 2012. 12, yes. okay. 2012, there was about this guy that uh, had to deal with his sisters uh, moving away, you know, a yeah. really reclusive guy that doesn't leave the apartment, his sisters, uh, his only friend is moving away and he'll be alone. And the film was about that. And that was the starting point to, uh, for, for us to develop the story in yeah. Tinta Bruta. But then we started adding uh, other aspects and then uh, we, we wanted to uh, talk about uh, how people uh, portray themselves uh, on the internet, in a, yeah. sometimes in a different way than on their uh, daily lives, uh, a more idealized version of themselves. So uh, we came across these websites where people uh, perform, you know, uh -huh. they create these online personas and they perform to yeah. people around the world. And uh, we thought this would be like the ideal uh, way for us to show this side of the virtual world, you know? Yeah. It's like uh, an opportunity to to show a story about the this guy that uh, it's very reclusive and he has uh, almost no friends, but at the same, at same time the internet he has like many followers and he has... Yeah. His, he becomes neon boy. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a completely yeah. different persona. Yes. Indeed. I found it interesting that the film is divided into three parts. Yes. Um, and... At least I, I got the sense that each part sort of is around a loss of that particular person yeah. Yeah. Who, who the part is titled uh, after. So can we talk about like what these 
different losses mean to the mm. me to, to, to the main character like let's start with Luisa the, the sister yeah I think uh, the city where the three of us are from uh, Porto Alegre yeah. is a medium-sized city at the very far south of right. the country and uh, I think this is a common issue for people from medium-sized cities that uh, once uh, people get to adulthood they tend to move away to larger cities mm -hmm. you know in yeah, the country or abroad. And uh, we, for, for people like us who stay there, uh, we get this uh, feeling of constant abandonment. You know, like um, people close to us are always leaving and we feel kind of left behind. Uh -huh. And uh, this was something important for us in the film, you know. Yeah. So it is in a, in, in a way a film about departures as well, yes. ab about yeah. abandonment and about uh, loneliness. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we thought about structuring the script uh, on those departures, you know. Yeah. Yes. And at the same time, uh, this uh, departure thing it's, uh, is also uh, connected with internet, because uh, yeah. the only way that you can uh, uh, still connect with these uh, people yeah, it's, is it's, in the internet, it's, but not with uh, real uh, people, but yeah. with uh, their personas. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. This, this performed yes. self, at least. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Um, we talk about Porto Alegre now. The city seems to be kind of a <laughs> the fourth main protagonist to, yeah. the, to the entire film. So what's your relationship with the city mm -hmm. and why is it, it's, it was an integral part of previous movies of yours as well, mm -hmm. so it seems like a very significant mm -hmm. place. Yeah, well, uh, Porto Alegre is the place where we were born and raised, yeah. so basically it's a place we love and we hate, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know, it's, it's hard to, to describe it actually, but I think the film portrays it, uh, at least how we feel the city, you know, yeah. like uh, sometimes uh, seems almost like a ghost town, okay. but uh, at the same time, you're always trying to find pe uh, interesting people there and do something with those people, yeah. you know. Yes. Yeah. And uh, and I think the three of us we try to be yeah. activists in the city uh, culturally yeah. in that sense, you know. Felipe and I we produce film festivals there and uh, okay. film screenings, and she organizes street parties for free <laughs> and everything. So I think mm -hmm. this kind of was an important connection for us. I think yeah. in this film as well. Yeah, and also how is the queer life in Porto Alegre and in yeah. in Brazil in a more general sense? Because we get a certain idea of that from the movie with this mm -hmm. very diverse, like wide range of queer characters mm -hmm. with, within the film. So. How is that in, in real time? Uh, well, I think uh, the queer uh, existence will always uh, be part uh, of everywhere, actually. Uh, and uh, in case of Porto Alegre, I think adult, although there is uh, a queer scene, uh, the state itself is quite conservative, you know, it's very yes. traditionalist. Uh, uh, its culture is very uh, misogynist and homophobic. Sexist, and sexist. yeah. yeah. So uh, there's always a, a bit of a struggle, and um, and I, I think this in the film, you know, yeah, uh, Pedro he uh, find uh, when he meets Leo he gets into this group that is more yeah. uh, this queer group that is more uh, liberal and acceptive, but uh, he's always surrounded by these other uh, yeah, the people, looks, yeah, yeah. And the yeah, the eye looks of people yeah. in the streets, yeah, you know, exactly. at the window all the time watching yeah. him, almost like judging him, you know. Yeah. Not by coincidence, I think the film starts in a in a trial, you know, yeah. in a courtroom. So, yeah. yeah. I also thought, uh, thought that this was a very interesting aspect of the film. We have these scenes coming back when all these people from the windows are watching Pedro, mm -hmm. the main character. And I thought it was very interesting in the sense that, I mean, watching a film itself, we are mm -hmm. sort of in a similar position yes. as the audience, yeah. as those people in, in those scenes. So was it like a deliberate decision to like try to complicate a bit this relationship between the screen and the and the audience uh, yes actually there's uh, a few scenes that uh, we put the the viewer uh, in a position near by the the actually even uh, the the viewers of new boy also yeah, yeah for example think, yeah, yeah, the yeah, exactly. the first shot of the film is uh, one camera yeah, showing yeah. yes, yes and then the voyeuristic i think yeah. yes the and there are our camera uh, has like this very, um, uh, it's almost like a, another character. Yeah, very and, active. Yes, and I think that's uh, in the film and it was very important to us, like, 
sometimes we, we, we should uh, ref, uh, reflect about, think about what uh, we are doing in, uh, as viewers. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So yeah, I, I thought that that was super interesting. Was it important for you to have um, this queer group in which Leo lives in, and it's mm -hmm. sort of like a family to him, and Pedro is just introduced to that group, and he feels somewhat at unease, uh, especially in the beginning with, with that. Uh, was it important for you to have this group so diverse and to mm -hmm. show like many different characters and like mm -hmm. many different backgrounds in, in that group? Yeah, I think so. Uh, actually, the, the way we, we uh, formed that group was basically we invited our friends yeah. to be in it. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's So lovely. like uh, yeah. all of them actually yes. are, are good friends of ours. So. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I think like it's a place where uh, everybody's accepted, you know, like, uh, and uh, one is there for the other. And I think this is something uh, that Pedro misses uh, after his sister departure. You now yeah. he, he feels left out and abandoned. And uh, when he finds that uh, that group, uh, he finds a new way of relating to people. Yeah, it's like a new family, a new kind of family. Yeah, yeah. it's a not like family, blood yeah. related, but yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, also, uh, what I really enjoyed about the film mm -hmm. is the soundtrack. Yeah. I really felt like that it opens up a whole different space within this cinematic world where like, the emotions of the different characters can expand to and also like, it could be, like, really resonate with you as, as a viewer. Mm -hmm. So can you tell a bit about like, how this... <laughs> All, the, all this beautiful uh, well, uh, came when, about. when we were writing, uh, we always start to write in, uh, and we put like, okay, maybe this uh, scene uh, fits with his this song, and the, the songs start to become like this uh, part of the process of writing. And uh, during the rehearsals, also yeah. we use a lot, a lot yeah. of songs to uh, uh, um, rehearse performance, and yeah, nice. the songs that we use. Uh, was was the same songs that we put uh, to record the scenes, yes. and eventually the same song that uh, was chose uh, yeah, to go to, to the, uh, the the movie. So. Yeah. yeah, but like the soundtrack uh, mm -hmm. research of Flippy does. I mean, like no, yeah, yeah. The, the, mainly the the, uh, uh, it's. Uh, from like uh, queer uh, yeah. groups from Brazil. Exactly, because it, it had yeah. like this very queer aspect to it, so it, it also opened the queer space within yes. within the film. Yeah, and, and yeah. Uh, that's very important to us, cause, like, and that we loved all the songs. Is like, yeah. and sometimes like you almost feel like okay, I'm watching this scene and this song starts, and you almost want to like uh, stand up yeah, and start exactly. yeah. to dance, and because it's you, very important. You, you really like it. It really resonates with, with <laughs> the audience. Um, also. Um, there is, I mean, what Pedro and Leo are doing, it's, it's basically a certain way of sex work, yeah. if, if, we, if you think about, think about it that way. Um, was it important for you to, to portray this? Because what I thought, it was super refreshing that it was portrayed in a very natural way and like without any moralizing around mm -hmm. the subject. So was that something that you aimed for? Yeah, for us, like this, uh possible moralization of uh, pornography, let's say, something that didn't even cross our minds, you know, we were yes. just not interested in yeah. even yeah. speaking yeah. about it, yes. you know, and uh, so uh, for us, what was interesting in that is that uh, on webcam they could become these other characters and they could com uh, sometimes connect there, right. uh, maybe uh, in a more direct way, in a stronger way than uh, on the material world, yeah. you know. And, uh, and for us, that dynamic was essential for us, you know? And, yeah. 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 Um, mm -hmm. I didn't find anything about, for you, about like previous acting experience. Mm -hmm. was, no. was this the first time? <laughs> yeah, the first time. Yeah, and how was it? Mm -hmm. like, it was really cra uh, crazy uh, because I, I have never worked uh, as an actor before. Yeah. Uh, but I, I had always this feeling that I, I I already knew Marcel Felipe uh, from Seashore, okay. and I remember that I, I saw a post on Facebook uh, saying uh, we're looking for uh, the casting of the uh, next movie, and I thought maybe I could uh, apply, I don't know, yeah. but I didn't apply. 
<laughs> so uh, I was. It, um, I remember that the post said, uh, "It doesn't matter if you are an actor or not. Uh, the important is if you are, uh, if you want to do this." If you, and so we started this convers uh, the conversation, and I said, "Oh, sure, I want to 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 do this." And the whole process was really beautiful, and uh, I felt like. Each day, each uh, rehearsal, I was growing as an actor and learning yeah. so much, and yeah. it was a really beautiful process. Yeah. yeah. And how was it like? Or I could imagine that it was difficult to get into this this character. I mean, Pedro is is a really dark place yeah. when you meet him. Um, so how was this process for you to to build to, to grow yeah. into this character? Yeah, it's a really complex character. Uh, there's so many. Uh, sides of yeah. Pedro, and uh, we always talked a lot about the character and our own feelings. So I, I, we talked about how Marzo felt about the, f the film and Pedro and me, what, I, uh, what connection I yeah. have with Pedro, and we started to investigate these these real things that I, uh, me yeah. as Chico have uh, to uh, connect with Pedro. Mm -hmm. So. All the anger that that yeah. he feels, I think everybody f feels some way yep. this, this yes. anger. So we just had to uh, investigate and go in that direction. Yeah. And so it was complex, but we really uh, connect as people, as Marcio, yeah. Felipe, and Chico, and Bruno, the other yeah. actor. It was really honest process, like yeah. talk about m myself. So. And it was a uh, beautiful and uh, long process yeah. also. It, uh, we rehearsed for uh, seven months. Seven months. Yeah, yes. seven months okay. yeah. So it was yeah. a. Uh, it was very nice, like because we uh, could open and, with and each other. With yes. each other. Yeah. Yeah. Before even before uh, uh, pick the the script, we saw a lot of uh, watch a lot of movies and talk about our lives and our, our experiences and our yeah. feelings about the queer community and mm -hmm. how, we f how we feel about being uh, queer in Porto Alegre. All these yeah. subjects was, uh, we talked about this, yeah. so mm -hmm. then we could rehearse the yeah. script. In a way, the film fits certain conventions of the coming-of-age film, also like generational films mm -hmm. in a way. Would you, would you consider your film as like Sort of a portrait of a of, of, of a generation and 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 the issue, the queer issues that yeah. come with it. Uh, I think yeah, in a way it's like very personal to what we feel uh, yeah. being uh, young and queer and at the moment, especially when uh, Brazil and I think many countries in the world are kind of like uh, becoming more conservative in some aspects, like politically, yeah. for example. And uh, so for us that was very. Uh, from the moment, you know, yeah, so yeah. Uh, I think I think people can identify with that. Yeah, know? we thought we should make a movie with a character with anger, but yeah. in a positive way. Like he, you will never accept like yeah. uh, being the yeah. victim. Yeah. Yeah. So we were very angry when yeah. we wrote the script and when we shot the film. You know, we had this. We were fueled basically by anger and despair. Yeah. I think yeah. because of the situation uh, going in the country and yeah. uh, and overseas as well. So yeah, I think so. yeah. All right, and uh, if you would, if you could, send a message out there <laughs> to the to the queer community, <sighs> what would it be? Uh, I think it, it's stand up. Yeah, always be, stand be up. Be there for each other, definitely. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and resist. Yeah. Resist. resist. I think the movie is really about resistance. Yeah. Yes. And all this community that other family, other kind of family that we can become, and support each other in a city that it's judgmental and in, the, in a country, uh, country that has so many problems, political problems now, and it's, it's really a resist. I think. Yeah. yeah, I think the time to put up with homophobic shits gone, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. to stand your ground. Yeah. So. In a way, like this film is a form of resisting yeah. these, yeah, these sure. kind of, kind of um, attitudes. Uh, let's say. I also wanted to ask, uh, it seems like from what we discussed so far and also like from the movie that it was quite an individual process to, to make this film. It was like really, you, you had a lot of freedom in, in doing this. Mm -hmm. Can you 
talk a bit about that, mm -hmm. like how you you approached it and how the production went. Yeah, in, in that sense, well, uh, because it seems like that it builds up from the queer community itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we had this, this idea first uh, from the short film, but uh, it was in 2012, so we had like a lot of time to uh, write in, uh, uh, the to write the script, and that was very important. And uh, I think this was uh, we always try to be the most honest with ourselves that we can when we are yeah. Uh, writing. Yeah. Yeah, and I think uh, at the same time we always do very intimate process, and by intimate I mean like from the writing of the script and everything. We kind of like take our time and just yeah, even put, the shoot, yeah. yeah, and put ourselves in there, and then working with the actors, everything, yeah. and with the production, everything. You know, because we work with small crews, so that helps to mm. be like a, an intimate film, and I think that reflects on the screen. You know, it's yeah, kind of, uh, it is there somehow. Yeah, we see an interesting way of portraying the male body in the mm -hmm. film. Um, and in a way, it is used, it is, it is a tool in, in many ways, especially for Neon Boy and Boy 25. Mm -hmm. in, in, in those personas, it's, it's a tool to, to achieve. It, it's almost a tool for survival, in a way, I would say. Um, was it important for you to shed light on, especially like in the nude scenes, for, on, on the male nude as from a different perspective than we are used to and in, in from mainstream cinema mainly? Uh, we always, uh, when we think about the sex scenes and the nudity scenes, we always uh, uh, think about uh, what the film is, uh, is asking, like what the film uh, needs about it. And uh, this is a very important thing to uh, be honest with the film also. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, and also we like to think ab uh, about uh, uh, the usage of, of the male body in a political way as well, in a narrative way, you know. Uh, I think especially like uh, if you're gay, you're uh, like sex and desire and all those things are always supposed to be hidden. You know, that's what you yeah. tend to learn since yeah. childhood. And uh, in that film, like the, the characters, they do that for a living, you know, they show off and they go there and they... I don't know, and this to us was something appealing, you know, yeah. somehow. And uh, I think there is a political side on it, and like uh, that was interesting to us. And, uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it yeah. certainly was a new perspective on that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would say. Uh, are you working on something now? We are. Uh, Philippe and I are, are starting to develop our next feature film, yeah. but uh, it's still very in the yeah, beginning, it's, it's, so it's we, yes. we can't uh, <laughs> even speak about it because. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the ideas are still getting of together. So, uh, yeah. But it, it will have something to do with queer mm -hmm. stuff, oh. maybe. I, 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 I think Hopefully. somehow our yeah. works tend to, you know, yeah. if, you like, if the it's characters are not, but uh, the way we look or yeah. the way we want mm -hmm. to portray society as well, yeah. like, we kind of like don't feel really appealed to go into conventional standards, yeah. Yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah or even narratives, so. Yeah. What about you? <laughs> so, uh, is it looking for you the future? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, now I'm looking for courses uh, and learn more about acting. I really, was, I'm really grateful for uh, yeah. Master and Felipe studies emotion in me. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so I'm looking for another project. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a really beautiful story. Like <laughs> you really yeah, started yeah. off from here. Yeah, yeah, that's really lovely. Beautiful. Well, thank you very much for you. having the time and answering the, our, our questions. And I wish you a lovely 68th Berlinale this year. Like, have a good time and congratulations on the film. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you.